Hi guys, it is, good lord, I don't even know the word to describe this gloomy smoke and hellfire and brimstone obliterated day here in the end times in the former paradise of the world's most beautiful campsite on the planet here at the, on the slopes of the Mount Baker volcano. Good God Almighty, what a day to be a doomsday prophet. Anyway, so it is Tuesday, September 5th, 2017, so it's the day after Labor Day, and so that means everyone is getting back to work and getting her done. Summertime's over. Vacation's over. So I'm going to do what I haven't been that good at doing the past few Tuesdays, and that's going on the science pages of the mainstream media to look at the various roundup of wacky, mad scientists, the techno-utopians, and of course the conspiracy wackos, seeing what's on the minds of the various uh, nuts and bolts of the uh, fringe, of the lunatic fringe. And I'm going to put the little chipmunk hound down, so he needs to get to work getting chipmunks. And we're going to dive in now. I've already, I think, let off my Saturday clueless moron roundup rant about this no-shit Sherlock story about these goddamn broken record conspiracy theories uh, now surrounding Hurricane Harvey, that Hurricane Harvey was somehow orchestrated by the New World Order to attack the state of Texas. Uh, and now... Uh, with this new one, Irma, bearing down on Florida, we can only hope and pray, dear God, that the conspiracy wackos will be saying in a few more days that it was the deep state, the deep state that sent Hurricane Irma directly on top of Donald Trump's, what's it called, Mar-a-Lago or whatever, his little billionaire castle down there in Florida in the path of this hurricane. If ever uh, we want the deep state and the new world order on the job, it would be this weekend. But anyway, that rant remains to be seen. So uh, as long as they're talking about uh, wackos, that's do a little bit of a segue somewhat related to the uh, to the hurricane uh, conspirators and that would be the chemtrail wackos and this one uh, you know guys I don't know anymore uh, Elon Musk says chemtrails are so real in, in what at least this report in some place called Inverse are, are calling a tongue-in-cheek tweet. Uh, you know, where, where someone was asking Elon Musk whether he thought that chemtrails were real or not, and he tweeted back, obviously, chemtrails are real. Now, you're, you're just assuming that he's joking, but I don't know anymore, guys. Uh, what else is Elon Musk saying? That we're going to colonize fucking Mars? That uh, we are, that the Matrix was real and we are all, this entire reality is actually nothing more than a computer program? Uh, I, I mean, anybody who, you know, acting like we're going to colonize Mars to save the human race is a hell of a lot bigger fucking whack job than, than somebody uh, claiming chemtrails are real. Uh, so I don't know if it's tongue in cheek or not. And it says in here, I guess they cite some poll that 17% 
of Americans now believe chemtrails are real, that there, there's several sub-variations, but uh, some variation that they are a sinister plot uh, by the New World Order or whoever, uh, hmm. while it says that, as I've had a rant before, that over 98% of scientists that they interviewed. I guess it was one scientist out of like 85 has ever seen any evidence whatsoever about chemtrails. But anyway, uh, it's not so much Elon Musk's tongue in cheek or not uh, tweet about chemtrails, of course the big story, many versions of this story. This is just good old CNBC story. The big story about Elon Musk this week, uh, at least a dozen versions on the mainstream media. <clears throat> Elon Musk <coughs> says the global race for AI, for artificial intelligence, will be the most likely cause of World War III. I don't know whether to pick up the no shit Sherlock button or the bullshit detector button. Uh, you know, while most eyes are looking to North Korea and, and I'm looking towards the South China Sea, e e Elon Musk and to a lesser degree Vladimir Putin are looking at artificial intelligence is is where World War III is going to erupt. Elon Musk has made an ominous warning about artificial intelligence, suggesting it could be the cause of a third world war. His comments were in response to Russian President Vladimir Putin, who said on Friday that the first global leader in AI would, quote, become the ruler of the world. There you go. Putin said further uh, that development of AI uh, raises both colossal opportunities and threats that are difficult to predict. Uh, there you go. Uh, Okay, so what was the full quote from Musk? Uh, it would be real nice if they would actually put the quote in here. Okay. <clears throat> AI, not country leaders, could start what Musk said, start war AI, not country, not country leaders, could start war. Musk said that there was a possibility that war could be automated. Uh, there you go. Uh, I guess they're just not going to give us the... Okay, finally, thank that, the very bottom of the article. The very bottom of this article. Thank you, CNBC. You know, why did I ever land on these fuckers? Don't you think maybe you should have put this like a little farther up in the fucking story? Okay, take it away, uh, Elon Musk. Quote, China, Russia, soon all countries will have strong computer science competition for AI superior, 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 Superiority at the national level, the most likely cause of World War III, in my opinion. There you go. Thank you, uh, CNBC, for that uh, that noise. I, I've 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 had uh, this, I've already mentioned this story three times, so I'm just going to say it one more time, read the headline one more time, and maybe I'll finally put it in the trash heap. Prepare for the rise of killer robots, says former defense chief.
We've been uh, we've been through this before, uh, but we're going to also mention this story just yesterday in my economic meltdown roundup round. It was my very last story, so I understand that about three people on the planet Earth might have heard this one, going from killer robots to robots just taking your job. This chart spells out in black and white just how many jobs will be lost to robots. And the long and the short of it is that robots will take over about one half, 50% of today's jobs will disappear into robot land in the next 10 to 20 years with the retail salesperson is has a 90% chance of becoming automated out of a job. Uh, when robots come for our jobs, the first people to fall will be those working in retail and fast food restaurants as well as the ubiquitous secretaries and, of course, anyone driving any kind of a car, a truck, or, it appears now, anyone driving a giant cargo ship. As unmanned ghost ships are coming your way, and they're, and they're talking about we're no longer talking about a, a, a goddamn taxi or an, even an 18-wheeler. We're talking about a, a multi-hundred-ton cargo ship plying the waters of the planet. Uh, anybody claiming we are not in... A, uh, in, in the middle of the twilight zone. Now this story by some fellow by the name of Mashi Vardy showing up in Market Watch. I am going to come back and do a full rant. This is probably out of one of these little business page publications called Market Watch. Uh, this is the single best, most intelligent analysis that I think uh, I have ever read about uh, about th this whole bit of uh, the robot revolution, <clears throat> titled "The Industrial Revolution's Scary Lesson for Surviving the Robot Revolution." <coughs> Just the uh, as. Uh, Moshi's telling us, I'm just going to read the beginning and I'll come back to this story in, a, in another rant in the near future. The impact of automation and artificial intelligence will be startling, disruptive, and potentially long-lasting as automation and artificial intelligence technologies improve Many people worry about the future of their work. If millions of human workers no longer have jobs, the worriers ask, what will people do? How will they provide for themselves and their families? And what changes might occur or be needed in order for society to adjust? And as I say, we'll be coming back. Uh, maybe I'll make this my doomsday sermon on Sunday. Anyway, I got to move along. Uh, cause a lot to cover and the mosquitoes are bearing down on me. I really did uh, get, a, get a chuckle out of this one. Hallelujah. This one came out on Labor Day. You know, everyone celebrating all these clueless moron uh, wage slave worker bees uh, celebrating the last day of summer vacation uh, you know like like just some 
the headless chicken running around in circles. And so I like uh, this little, the lighter side of AI. This is the bright side of the AI and robot revolution. You might get to retire earlier. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell the fuck yeah. Bring on them robots. Anything. Anything to uh, help the clueless fucking morons quit that goddamn soul-killing, planet-eating job of yours and, and getting out here and, and enjoying the little bit of this planet still left while we still can if, if, the, if AI and the robot revolution will get a few more people to retire earlier, this old eco-Nazi says bring on the robot revolution. Okay, what is on the minds <coughs> of NASA <coughs> this week? We have two stories of interest to the eco-Nazi, to the doomer, doom and gloomer. First one, NASA wants to prevent the Yellowstone supervolcano from destroying the United States. Yes, uh, good luck, NASA. NASA is going to defuse the Yellowstone super volcano. NASA now believes the Yellowstone super volcano, of course, if you watch the movie 2012, uh, give you an idea of what we're up against. NASA believes the Yellowstone super volcano is a greater threat to life on Earth than any asteroid. So it has come up with a plan to defuse its explosive potential. So what do you think is their plan? Uh, let's see. To save all life on Earth, uh, if we can ever get past all the jokes uh, will we ever get to the plan? The plan is called letting off steam. Okay. So NASA researchers have explored what it would take to avert a super volcano catastrophe. The answer, find a way to cool the magma down. And so to achieve this, the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab team calculated a super volcano on the brink of eruption would have to let off steam. They propose to do this, NASA proposes to prevent a volcano by pricking the super volcano's surface. But this in itself poses risks. If they drill too deep and the vent could cause an explosive depressurization that may, may set off the exact kind of super volcanic eruption the NASA scientists were trying to avoid. Okay, and uh, if that's not enough to keep NASA busy this week, they're also, NASA is hiring for its new planetary protection officer whose job duties include saving planet Earth. So if you know how to save planet Earth, this is a $100,000 a year job to be NASA's new planetary protection officer. Uh, and what it's basically talking about is defending, is uh, not 
defending the Earth from space aliens, but from microbes that we may be bringing back from our little uh, our little jots around the planet. Uh, so I guess if you know how to tell whether rocks being brought back from Mars by NASA would lead to some sort of evil microbe destroying all life on Earth, NASA has a job for you. Now this next one, we're going to switch gears from uh, NASA to smartphones from uh, the Atlantic Magazine, this long, long, in-depth article asking the question, have smartphones destroyed an entire generation? And the answer to that question, of course, is yes. This is written by one of these uh, child psychologists studying teenagers. A little chipmunk dog is at it again. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna, I, I would love to do a full rant and maybe I will. I'm just gonna cut to the chase about halfway through this article after all of these little anecdotes. Uh, this shrink shares, quote, <clears throat> The advent of the smartphone and its cousin, the tablet, was followed quickly by hand-wringing about the deleterious effects of screen time, mostly talking by teenagers, but the impact of these devices has not been fully appreciated and goes far beyond the usual concerns about curtailed attention spans. The arrival of the smartphone has radically changed every aspect of teenagers' lives, from the nature of their social interactions to their mental health. These changes have affected young people in every corner of our nation and in every type of household. The trends appear among teens, poor and rich, of every ethnic background in cities, suburbs, and small towns. Where there are cell towers, there are teens living their lives on their smartphones. Uh, psych psychologically, these... Uh, the, the newest breed, we're, we're, we're talking the 12 to 18 year olds here, they are more vulnerable than millennials ever were. Rates of teen depression and of teen depression and suicide have skyrocketed since 2011 when these, when this, you know, every goddamn teenager had to have one of these fucking things. It is not an exaggeration to describe iGen, iGen as being on the brink of the worst mental health crisis in decades, and much of this deterioration can be traced to their phones. And of course, uh, uh, hell with 12 year olds L look at the goddamn three-year-olds uh, on their smartphones but I assure you looking at the uh, just right outside the world's most beautiful campsite uh, the goddamn smartphone is, is gonna be the last thing uh, on these on these little fuckers minds in a few more years I assure you uh, uh, that, that smartphones are not going to be the leading cause of depression on today's 12-year-olds uh, when they're 20. Anyway, uh, let's get back to the, uh, to the conspiracy wackos. And I don't know, this one, uh, I don't know who this is. Uh, might just be Yahoo News in general. <clears throat> Here you go, guys. U.S. investigating after diplomats fall sick in Havana. 
This is a oh, this is the French news service. Straight ahead, no joking about it anywhere in this story. No snotty, snide, snarky comments. <clears throat> U.S. And, and Canadian officials were investigating Thursday after diplomats posted to Havana, Cuba, fell ill amid reports that they may have been targeted by a mysterious sonic weapon. U.S. officials refused to directly blame Cuba itself for the incidents, which appear to have begun last year. A State Department spokeswoman would not detail the nature or number of the injuries to, you know, to uh, diplomats in Havana, but she did confirm that a number of U.S. diplomats have returned home from Cuba for treatment. Unidentified officials, uh said that the staff may have been harmed by a sonic device fired either inside or outside their Havana residences. Some countries have developed sonic and ultrasonic weapons that can be used for crowd control or, for example, to deter seaborne pirates without resource to lethal force. What were we saying about living in the twilight zone? Two more quick ones. What are those old uh, pyramid pokers up to? Finally, the No Shit Sherlock story has arrived. Ancient e Egyptian secret room discovered in Great Pyramid by archaeologists armed with lasers. An international team of archaeologists believe it is on the cusp of pinpointing the location of a secret room hidden within the Great Pyramid of Giza as it uses cutting-edge laser technology to map what they're calling the 4,500-year-old ancient Egyptian wonder. Uh, Malithi Taubi, uh, president of this group of archaeologists, uh, confirmed there was a hidden room inside the structure now they need to find its exact location. And finally, we will wind up this story with a question which will probably be answered no, but maybe, just maybe, hallelujah, will be answered yes. Will California become the first state to decriminalize Psychedelic mushrooms. Hallelujah. So I guess this fellow Kevin Saunders uh, is starting a ballot initiative uh, that would decriminalize the use, possession, sale, transport, and cultivation of magic mushrooms for adults over 21. He'll need to collect at least 365,880 valid voter signatures in the next 180 days. So anyone in California, get out there and sign your petition. Uh, I love the quote from Kevin Saunders, quote, what I want to do is take the shackles off. Take the shackles off the mushroom god. I want to have an adult conversation. Not only are the soccer moms high, meaning on marijuana now, but some of them are taking mushrooms. Hallelujah! 
soccer moms on magic mushrooms and we act like uh, all hope is lost here in the end times uh, we need uh, Donald Trump and that little maggot over there in North Korea to sit down together and each eat five grams of magic mushrooms and maybe just maybe nuclear war could be averted but uh, nuclear war is uh, the last thing on my mind in this per this particular minute good god guys I, I mean look at this I, I would not have thought uh, four hours ago that it could have gotten any worse look at this 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 hillside is one half a mile and you can finally smell the smoke. For all I know, I'm just on the other side of that goddamn mountain is in flames right now. It's easy to smoke them if you got them now. Just breathe in. We are so fucked. Bye, guys.